If you don't know me, my name is Taranjit Singh Rai and yes, I'm an award-winning scientist, teacher, lecturer and a football coach. What I'm not is a financial advisor. Today, we're going to talk about Opus Labs. Not only are we going to talk about Opus Labs, I have managed to find time to interview Brian Otens, the man himself, CEO of Opus Labs. Hello, sir. How, how are you? I'm doing well. So let's get started, Brian. So the thing is, it's, it's on the spot. So I have a few questions. Welcome to the channel. Could you please, in one minute, define who is Brian? Who is Brian? Wow. I, I kind of have this down now, but I'm a, a serial entrepreneur, a loving father and husband. Uh, um, I have a lot of passions in my life, but um, family is number one and business is certainly number two. So I, I own eight companies, um, the most recent being Opus Labs in the Web3 space. And um, yeah, it, it, I've kind of always been entrepreneurial and, and taken action on anything that I thought might be successful. And um, I found great success, but it also has brought me to this point where I have many companies, many responsibilities, all in different industries. So I've kind of uh, created this bit of a web. And uh, so that's the real quick one minute overview of who Brian Ottens is. Fantastic. And I apologize for being overdressed. I am rushing straight from work. so. Please forgive me for for. I hope I'm not underdressed. <laughs> that's not, that's fine. This is Web three. <laughs> so yeah. So so you you mentioned there about your businesses and you mentioned Opus Labs. So again, could you very discreetly, quickly define what is Opus Labs? Opus Labs is an agency that will be it'll be the bridge to help Web two come over to Web three. So whether it is a business or a celebrity or any entity that wants to develop a Web3 strategy um, and, and get over into the Web3 space, we will provide an A to Z solution to allow them to do that. So that would be every, every step of the way from, from creative thinking on what value and utility to add to an NFT if they wanted to launch an NFT project, to um, helping them develop the smart contracts, build the community, do the marketing, everything that you might need. Um, and aside from that, we're also pivoting a little bit and, and coming up with longer term solutions instead of just a white glove service that we need to customize an NFT launch for every celebrity or every brand. Um, we're, we're trying to develop some platforms that could be licensed out to manufacturers or brands that will help them to integrate blockchain technology into their legacy business models. Um, we got some pretty cool stuff in the works in that too. Okay, um, so related to that, uh, obviously this needs a lot of uh, smart contract uh, capabilities, management. So who do you have on team who actually deals with all of that? Uh, because you have eight businesses, you have now CEO of uh, Opus Labs. Uh, so who deals with all the security aspects? Is it a team? Is it a person? Could you enlighten us on, on those aspects, please? Yeah, so um, Dan Bright is our CTO and he's primarily in charge of the working with the teams that develop the smart contracts. We have worked with a couple teams already and I think if you are paying attention to some of our strategic partnerships that we've had with other communities, um, you can kind of see where our head is, is going in the space. So um, right now we've been working on an outsourced basis for the smart contracts, but we've been basically hand selecting the partners that we're working with. And if you look at some of the partner communities, such as Alpha Mutants and Vispex and, and people like that, um, they've got defined teams that already do that kind of stuff. And that's where their entire function and focus is. So what we're really looking to do is not reinvent the wheel, find very strong strategic partners and work together with them for various needs when we have launches in Web3. So basically, if I've got it correct, so we have Dan who is in charge of all of that, but the work is outsourced to trusted parties. Okay. Yes. And, and like any startup company, um, it would not be a wise business decision to bring all of that in-house when the demand isn't there. Um, so as we scale and grow, it's our intention to have a full-time team or, you know, maybe we get large enough that these kind of teams merge together. You know, I didn't speak to any of them about this, but it, it just stands to reason that wherever the business is, that's where the talent is going to want to be. And so if and when the time comes, that's when we'll bring things in-house and, and have everybody on team. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So why? You already have a very successful, as you say, eight businesses. You have so many uh, fingers and so many pies. Why? Why you decided Opus Labs? 
something about I'm doing a lot of soul searching and I realized something about myself and that is that I don't really enjoy the maintenance of businesses. I look back to the time of my life where I was the most fulfilled and uh, the most challenged. And that was during the years when I was really growing and starting these companies. Um, and once I was able to get them up to a self-sufficient point, it, it, it kind of just like, it, it, it coasts a little bit. I mean, you could tweak and modify and work to grow and expand. Um, but for me, that's kind of why I want to hire smart people to help to maintain all of these things. Um, my true joy is in the creative process and in the building, the creating something from nothing. And I realized that about myself. That's why I have as many businesses as I do. I love to form them, bring them up to a point of success and then hire teams and, and, and mm -hmm. make them continually successful over time. Um, but that, that, that was the really the starting point. I recognize that about myself. It's what I really enjoy. And then the Web3 space just represents a tremendous opportunity. And while I've always entered mature industries in the past, the idea of being a pioneer and being here so early and overcoming these obstacles and challenges that a, a young industry faces, it was just really intriguing to me. And so I wanted to take on that challenge. And, um, yeah, I, I just enjoy it. I think that Web3 and I think blockchain and I think NFTs, I think it's the future. And I think we are super, super, super early. Okay. And so I, I personally believe that this represents the largest opportunity in my personal career. Okay, fantastic. So uh, related to that, so how many total staff you have uh, on Opus Labs? I know it's a registered company as far as I understand. Uh, could you uh, tell us about on, this? On Opus Labs? Opus Labs, yeah. Opus Labs staff. Yes. How many full time yeah, people you have working? Between between all of the the marketing, the staff, the founding team, and the devs, we had about eighteen or nineteen people okay. uh, that are working. Okay. Now, much like Web three, not all these guys are full time. You know, they're they're maybe working on a couple of different projects and things. But the team of people at our disposal right now is 18 or 19 people, um, including the founding team and all of the staff that we have. Okay. Uh, so that leads me nicely on to Treasury. Obviously, I think the whole project has been minted out. So my calculations are the Treasury has way, way above 1 million USDC. So what are the plans, uh, how to use those? That's a big amount for a startup company to manage. So what are you doing to, to deploy those funds, to manage those funds, to create absolutely sensational value to the holder? So if you can enlighten us on that. Yeah, um, while it is a lot of money, it's also not a lot of money. Um, when you're really trying to, to operate a business at this scale. Um, so all that being said, we've made some treasury purchases that we believe are good long-term values in the form of NFTs. And we bought an admit one NFT. We bought a proof collective. We bought a Cherniak uh, generative art piece. So all of these are very high end um, purchases that we believe will increase in value over time. Um, and it also gives us access to individuals and alpha in those communities that, you know, really will, will help us in our, um, in our approach when we bring on clients and things like that. Um, we are being very conservative, as you very well know, with the use of these funds. Um, there's no shortage of people that are approaching us for investment opportunities and this and that. And I, as much as people look at me maybe from the outside and say that I'm not conservative, I am a very, very fiscally conservative individual. And that means that when I actually make a decision to, to, to invest in something, I have thought through every possible angle. Um, and so I'm trying to bring that mentality to the founding team. We've got a system of voting that takes place if there's anybody that ever brings an opportunity to the table. Um, so right now, we're being very cautious. We're looking at the markets and we're sitting in a very, very large cash position, which is really the good place to be. Um, We've invested a couple hundred thousand dollars of that cash. We've paid back 
couple hundred thousand dollars in fees and whatever it took to launch the project initially. Um, and the rest is just sitting either in uh, USDC, a little bit of Ethereum, and the majority in fiat in a bank account, um, just waiting to be deployed in the right ways. I'm not looking to invest all of it. I think that we want to invest a small portion of it, and then the rest is going to be utilized for cash flow, operational expenses. Um, a lot of these, let's say, celebrities and, and people that we're working with, they want us to front the costs of the project. So you're always going to need capital at your at the ready to launch a project to ultimately turn a profit and make that treasury grow. Okay. So yeah, I, we're, we're very transparent in the things that we purchased so far. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say that we're aggressively looking to invest a lot at the moment. We're, we're being cautious. Okay. Fantastic music to my ears. I'm a holder for full transparency purposes. I yeah. uh, have bought uh, uh, two maestros so just for everyone who's listening um, yeah so so just just to be absolutely transparent so that's music to my ears okay so let's just uh, move on a little bit uh, what I see uh, again you know me I've been with uh, Opus Labs from day one I see Brian one man army and sometimes Vlad so is there a plan to you know like we love you we don't want anything to happen to you what is the plan for Opus Lab succession, if something happens to you, what happens to the project? Could you enlighten the audience on that, please? Yeah, hundred percent. I've really been the, the spokesperson for the company. Um, you, you know, any time there was an AMA or a space or anything like that, it, it was the collective group kind of said, "Brian, you're the you're the right person to do that. You you go do that." And so, I understand that the majority of what people are seeing um, is me, but all the founding team, you know, myself. Vlad, Joe, Dan, Andy are all equally involved in the background. Some of us are better at public speaking. Some of us are not. And so just because I'm the face doesn't mean that I'm the, the be all end all of what's going on. So um, everybody brings a very unique talent to the team. Uh, uh, you know, Joe specifically was the one who brought over the Dola Media partnership, which I think is going to be phenomenally good for us as a, as a brand and for all of our holders. Uh, already there's just, there's been so many, uh, sales pitches and conversations and second and third pitches and follow-ups that things are starting to really happen in the background. And so Joe's really doing a lot of the business development side of things, Andy with the creative and the art, Dan working with the blockchain teams and interviewing different front end and back end developers, Vlad just doing the thing that Vlad does, which it is, he, he's just a connector. He's a, he's a high passionate, high energy individual. And so everybody brings something to the team. If I get hit by a bus tomorrow, that would stink. I don't want that to happen, but you know, Opus is in good hands and, um, you know, we, we've got all things in place for, for God forbid, anything happens to any one of us. I, and in addition to that, we're working with, um, handle Maestro handle in our community, uh, to build out our series of educational content mm -hmm. that was part of the utility that we announced pre-mint and he is going to work with each individual founder and we're going to be producing bite-sized educational content based upon our skill set and expertise so i think that you're going to find a lot more coming from the other founders in the upcoming months okay that's absolutely great to, to hear and just to be completely clear I want you to thrive and prosper and have good health. It is a question for everyone because I think uh, one of the biggest thing which Web3 is missing, I absolutely worry about this. If I get hit by my bus, there's no way my wife or my kids can manage the wallets that I'm managing. So how do I ensure that whatever the hard work I have put is is, is uh, given to them? Uh, so I think that's that's a... Maybe idea for someone listening to this chat to solve that problem. Uh, I know in Cosmos ecosystem, there are some solutions where uh, NFT will hold all the keys to your wallet and that NFT could be gifted. Anyways, let's not get distracted. Yeah. But that, you know, that does deserve a quick little aside because this is something my wife and I talk about all the time. She, a lot of what we have for my family is all up here in my head. And she always asks me, usually after a couple drinks, like at, <laughs> out to dinner, like, oh, listen, if something ever happened to you, like, what do I do? Where do I start? And so I have been going through the process of formulating a very comprehensive plan 
and an outline. And basically she knows that where she'll have access to all of the information, the bank accounts, the businesses, the wallets, what to do, who to call, if, then. So anybody that is working in Web3 that's that's managing or holding a substantial amount of assets, I think it's incredibly important to leave a detailed and structured plan in a very safe spot yeah. for your successors. Yeah. Fantastic. That's I think that's a, that's a good distraction because I, I don't think Web3 people uh, kind of worry about these things. Um, but, but I think it's no, very, no, very Especially with the seed phrases and all this yeah. stuff. I mean, most people truly do keep them to themselves. Yeah. And if mm-hmm. something ever happened, it, it might be lost and gone forever. My seed phrases are a mixture of three languages. So if you want to hack <laughs> into my wallet, you really need to know three languages and you need to write. So uh, again, my wife doesn't so, know some of those languages, so <laughs> so it always worries me. Anyways, uh, moving on, um, you, you you hinted Dola Media. I know Rock Money is coming. Could you give us some knowledge about uh, what's coming in terms of Dola Media and the timelines? Most importantly, Web three is very impatient uh, bunch. Uh, so what do you have plans in in the plans in terms of timelines? First of all, uh, tell us about Dollar Media, Rock Money, and then also about the timelines when we can see these projects to fruition. And what would the community, sorry, there are three questions, apologies. And the third one is, what do the community get? Is there a passive income? Is there an NFT they can sell? How do they gain value? How, they, how do they gain? Money is also very important in, in these projects. So what, if step by step, three, three questions there. So first, first question, uh, Dola Media has been our best strategic partnership yet in the opportunities that have been presented to us. So we've had some some really cool uh, conversations with big name celebrities, and I, we feel very confident. We have a, an official um, proposal that was just sent out, I think, yesterday to a incredibly well-known celebrity at the peak of her career right now that wants to launch into web three with a very unique project and idea that we all as a team feel is going to work well so we're hoping that we are the team to do that and we can close it which would be great um and i think that that would start pretty quickly uh rock money is (laughs) you know my buddy my boy scott we we just need to reel him in a little bit and, and get him focused on you know it's a done deal we're moving forward we're selecting the artists that we want to work with first. We had given him a kind of a target date of February of 2023 for the first launch in his collection. So we're going to try our best to hold him to that. Um, And that's going to be basically a collection released over time. He's going to, again, like a quick overview is he's going to work with successful web three artists. And those Web3 artists are going to do renditions, either physical or digital or both, of photography taken by Scott. And that's from his time back in Pink Floyd and Toto and Supertramp. And so each one of these artists is going to do their own rendition. We're going to release a collection through those artists. And the cool thing about that is that we could cater to that artist's following. We don't need to just rely on one group of people. We don't need to build a whole new group of people. We'll have Opus, we'll have each individual artist's following. And it's not going to be just a one-time launch. It's going to be launches over time with 10 or 12 different artists. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an ongoing project. It's really exciting. Um, But there's a lot of moving parts to that. And so we've got the um, agreement in place. We've got the artist agreements and legal. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Um, and then, so, so let's just take those two, for example, um, the traditional utility for the maestro is going to apply where we're going to have guaranteed allow lists, Mm -hmm. the ultra rare, the epic and the legendaries are going to get their discounts and free for those collections, um, because it's going to be a multi-release type thing. We're going to do our best to let them know what artists are coming. So let's say a legendary holder, he's not going to get a free NFT from every single artist, but maybe we can tell him, okay, we're going to work with these 10 artists. You can select which one you're going to want the free NFT for. That's just kind of a thought process behind behind the scenes. Um, we have, we're working with another team to develop, to develop a really cool app that I am going to be presenting to my industry and the music manufacturers. 
that could really revolutionize the space. So you've heard me talk in a lot of AMAs about introducing blockchain technology to these brands for use cases like customer warranties, product serialization, and product authenticity. We are in the process of developing an app that will accomplish all three of those things that could then be licensed out to all of these manufacturers. And to me, that's the, that's the big money idea. That's like the, okay, this is, you know, instead of customizing an NFT launch for every single brand, which is still a plan, this is something that could just generate recurring revenue over time. And you can appeal to more, more people. When we have something like that, we have found some very creative ways to reward our holders Spill it. so that they could share in the successes <laughs> that we're sharing in. Yeah, yeah, spill all the beans. Careful with how I, say. I, know who I'm, I know who I'm talking to. <laughs> um, so, so in situations where there won't be an NFT launch yeah. in a whitelist type situation, rest assured that you'll be very, very happy to be a maestro holder if and when Opus Labs is successful in generating the revenue from those efforts. Okay, I, I get it. So again, exactly what I was thinking, not everyone who is on the whitelist will, let's say, mint a 3 ETH project. Mm -hmm. So in a way, um, it's, it's, it's way out of their range. So I think some kind of passive um, uh, value, or I, I hate to use the word money income, but some kind of passive value uh, would be really, really good. Okay, now, now let's. I, I've grilled you enough. I think let's let's change the tack. Tell me that about. Easy. Tell me about twelve days of Christmas, and before you tell that, just for the audience who are listening to this video, there is still time. By the time you see this video, there might be first riddle out. So if you really want to participate in that, please get a maestro of the secondary markets. Over to you, Brian. Tell me about your twelve days of Christmas giveaway. So a couple things. Christmas is my favorite time of year. I am by nature just a giving, loving human being. I hope that everybody has come to know and realize that. And we wanted to find a way to give back to our holders in our community. So um, we thought we thought of a really cool idea called the 12 Days of Christmas. And each day is going to be a giveaway. And they're going to be increasing in value as the days get closer to Christmas. Um, and in order to win that, you have to solve a riddle. So we'll be at 4 p.m. Eastern each day. We're going to post a riddle. You're going to have 24 hours to submit your answer to that riddle. And we'll take all of the correct answers and we'll randomize, raffle off the winner for that day. Um, we were going to do it at first come, first served. But we realized with time zones, it's just, it's really tough for people. Um, since there's 12 days of Christmas and there's 12 keywords in a seed phrase, every riddle has a seed word embedded in it. And on Christmas day, I was going to do it at 4 PM Eastern. It seems as though the community wants it at 2 PM Eastern. I think that that might be a more favorable time for like globally. Um, so I'm going to just assess it maybe ask a couple more people and we might release it at 2 p.m. But I'll definitely let everybody know. Um, we will release our final riddle or our final clue, which when solved, will give people access to figure out what that seed phrase is. And that is going to be a race. So the first person to figure it. out that seed phrase has to access the wallet and transfer all the assets out to their own wallet as quickly as possible before somebody else does. And in that wallet is a half of an ETH. It's a golden ticket, a Maestro golden ticket. It's a rare export. And it's the glitch Maestro that I personally bought for 15 Ethereum. Oh my so goodness. So somebody, somebody is going to have a really, really nice Christmas morning, day, something or other. Um, Fantastic. And so, yeah, we wanted to have fun with it. I don't think that the riddles are going to be really difficult we all had to come up with them on our own because you can't google a riddle you can't like if you google a riddle then people could just google the answer to the riddle so 
that was a challenging thing. I've never come up with riddles before, but we had a fun time with it. And I think that it'll be manageable. I really look forward to it as much as I cannot participate just because, as you know, my day job is just challenging as, as, as crazy. And, and uh, I, I will You'll try. You'll be able to participate. Huh? You will be. You have 24 hours per riddle. You'll definitely be able to participate. We'll see. We'll see. I am not a riddle person, but I'm still excited. You know, the community success oh. is our success. So uh, one thing about Opus Labs is is that the community spirit is pretty high. I, uh, I don't know if you followed some comments, but uh, some person needed $200 and I have never met them. I transferred them out just because they are from Opus and I know many other people have done similar uh, things uh, in, in the family. So I think it's a very trustworthy uh, community. And I would say in crypto, the well, most important thing is, is the community. And I think we are, as Opus Lab uh, family members, building the community and it will be good to get more uh, Web2 people uh, into into our community. So um, a lot, we, we started a lot uh, about the, the Web2 audience uh, with, with having massive demand. So what are we doing in terms of uh, trying to, let's say, um, Web2 person, teach them OpenSea, teach them MetaMask, teach them um, how it works and so on and so forth. So w what are the plans to really get that community in? It's a great question. It's something that has fallen primarily on me, and it's, it's been it's been a one on one process that that is not sustainable. So, you know, I this, this twelve days of Christmas has been one of those times where I've just encouraged people. Like, listen, a lot of them are in Discord; they're just not active, or it's not something that they check daily. So, um, hopefully, this will get a surge of engagement from a lot of them. Um, but it's been a one-on-one -on -one thing. I, I've been hand-holding people throughout the entire minting process, throughout the Discord process. And like, it, again, it's not a sustainable solution. So I think that there needs to be some evergreen educational content that we can submit to them. And it's going to be up to them. I mean, listen, they, they made the investment. Some of them invested quite heavily. Um, so if they want the return on that investment, my message has been you have to be active in Discord. You know, all of these whitelist opportunities, which if you saw today, we, we got 150 VVV whitelists to um, get 65% off of the floor price and, and mint a dolphin. Or if you're a diamond fan, you get 80% off the floor. Um, that's a great opportunity. You know, there's uh, the export or Vispex mint, the Worlds Beyond mint, the, the non-fungible arcade, the alpha mutants, all these things were income generating opportunities for our holders that they need to be active in discord in order to to do so evergreen educational content is what i keep coming down to and it's going to be up to us to either create that or find people that have already created it and push it out to that that group of people there's an idea there uh maybe a video tutorial uh commissioned to to be handed to these web three web two folks mm -hmm. and then once they have watched the tutorial, maybe then someone from the community can uh, help those persons. Anyways, yeah. I've hosted a couple of like small classes, some small Zoom classes for um, <laughs> a good example is almost everybody in my entire tennis club has owns Maestros, <laughs> right? So every morning, like I just got back from tennis, you know, I'm talking to them at the end, we sit around, we have coffee, whatever. I'm talking to them about opportunities up and coming. And so I hosted a Zoom class to give them kind of a Okay. NFT crypto 101 course. Fantastic. So I got to do more of that. Fantastic. Uh, you'll be glad that we are coming towards the end of the interview. I don't want to keep you very long. So two final uh, questions. Um, the first one, um, how does Brian relax? Don't tell me you play the piano. That's That answer is out. How does Brian relax? Uh, I don't that much, which is one of the issues that needs to be addressed. Uh, piano is a very good outlet for me. I, I did get my band back together. We're going to be doing a show in January, which is which is quite nice. We're going to do a set of 70s, 80s, and 90s music. Um, I will say that I you know that whole pre-mint process and the mint process really really burned me out. You know, and I'm not too prideful to to say that um, the demands and the time and the effort and everything that that got put in was draining to say the least and so right after mint I, I ended up getting quite sick i think that's a recurring theme in this space for a lot of project founders 
Um, and it, it kind of, it, I needed a little bit of a reset. So I took my wife to the Virgin Islands. That was a nice little getaway and a trip. Um, so I, I think it's just very important with the demands of Web3 and the expectations of Web3 to not let it suck you in. And I'll give you your quote again, which you said to me, I can't wait to stop my nine to five job so I can work 24 seven in Web3. I love it. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, I, I think we've got a very strong community and I've been kind of preaching since day one that, you know, it's not going to be 24 seven. Just trust us to build the business that we're building. Mm -hmm. um, it is my personal goal and responsibility that I feel to make sure that everybody receives value back for what they participated in and um and, and a lot more than that over time so if if you guys can just you know trust in the system and the, the process and, and trust in our business skills and ability to, to scale and grow this then um i believe everybody's going to be happy um but yeah i think that's why we did the the sanctuary sundays on discord i, I just think it's really important to unplug this has a way of just sucking you in and you're constantly getting notifications on your phone you know, oh what's this what's this you can't miss out on this so everybody well, just 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 you know. just just to cut, cut you off there the reason i got a maestro was i saw sunday is no go day that is the thing that attracted me to opus first time i'm like oh here's a group of people who are doing things differently so actually the reason why i got my first maestro was because i saw that that these guys are serious about uh, mental health as well. So uh, just just yes. to let you know, so that was a huge hook for me to join the community. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mental health is a, a very serious thing, and I just would encourage everybody to be aware of it yeah. and take the appropriate time away from Web three when needed. Yeah. It'll always be there. So. Fantastic. Okay. So we are towards the tail end. Final thoughts, Brian, before we stop this interview. What would you like to say? Final thoughts. I I just want to thank everybody that has participated in the Maestro Man. I truly believe in it, and I know I'm biased, but I, I look at the community that we have and the family-type atmosphere that we've cultivated, and I don't see it anywhere else in any other Discord or channel or anything. People's willingness to help others, um, the family atmosphere, the lack of FUD that happens and you know, all, just we really are a truly unique group and I just want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for putting their trust in us as a team um, and just know that we take that as a phenomenal responsibility and we are going to deliver on all that value so thank you real truly thank you okay fantastic Brian that brings us end to this interview and thank you very very much for taking busy time out of your schedule and then come and, and chat to a small town YouTuber. <laughs> so yeah. thank I'm, you very I'm, much. I love everything that you're doing. Okay. And thank you for your all your participation too. Like you've been phenomenal and I can't wait to see this YouTube channel grow. Okay. So let this be one of the steps along that journey. Okay. Awesome. See you later, Brian. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir.